Goodbye, one all. Please, I never want to see that result again. I thought, I, I felt like it was going to happen again tonight. I'm sure you did as well. Bruno Fernandes there getting a second goal in the, what, the 96th minute for Manchester United. 2-0 winners against Brighton at Old Trafford and a huge sigh of relief. A performance which isn't really, which didn't really provide us with any sort of answers to what we wanted. You know, the frustrations we've had in the last three games. Ultimately, uh, it's a result that we had there tonight, not a performance. I think 11 against 11, Brighton were by far the better team. You would think they were the team playing at home. Manchester United really played off the park in that first half, a first half which showed no bite. No, like you can. It, it's when you, you, you sound like a cliche football fan when you start talking about these sorts of things, but there was no passion. There was no desire to get to that second ball first. There was no, the right, the right attitude just was not there in that first half. And Brighton were comfortably the better team in that first half and should have really gone in probably 1-0 up. Incredible save from David De Gea. But then the second half changed. It's incredible what happens when you have a little bit of tempo, when you play with a little bit of attitude and aggression and you go for the press. All of a sudden in the first 10 minutes in that second half, we were on Brighton. And we forced the error for the goal. Ronaldo, I'll speak about him in a second. And then it was the, go it was the red card that changed the game. I don't know why uh, it needed VAR for that decision to be made, but it was made. Uh, Lewis Dunk was sent off. Manchester United, we had the man advantage. You'd think at that point, 1-0 up against Brighton at Old Trafford against 10 men. Boom, pump it. Go for that second goal. Kill the game off quick. Instead, we didn't. We do not have that killer instinct in this team. I don't know why or where it is or where it's going to come from or simply why you just don't see it. But Manchester United, they put you through the ringer, don't they? When you watch them, you have to sit on the edge. And we were just on the knife edge, even up against 10 men, Brighton at Old Trafford. What's his face? Moda cracked the bar, I think. Ridiculous shot from him. Danny Welbeck had a chance there, snuck in between Lindelof and Maguire right at the end. Oh, I don't know why United have to do it. But as I said, you see the name of the title, relief, no killer instinct. That's what I would say from that game. If I'm going to speak about positives, of course, I'm going to speak about the return to goals for Cristiano Ronaldo. And that was a cracking goal, by the way. Kind of made from nothing, a couple of touches from him, proper Ronaldo, like put his foot through it, bammed it into the bottom corner. And you saw from his re reaction, his celebration, that was a, a goal of relief for him. No goal in six games. I did a video. We had a conversation about Cristiano Ronaldo. None of us doubted that he was going to come back and get among the goals. We didn't know when it was going to come from. And today, we needed him. We needed him. And when I tell you who my man of the match was easily, it might be that it might be given to Ronaldo here on whoscored.com. But nah, Bruno Fernandes for me today was creating. I think he had, Ronaldo should really have had a hat trick, let's be completely honest. Two guilt edged headers he had, one that he sent wide, one that was tipped over the bar. Bruno Fernandes was creating for fun today. Really nice, instinctive passes from him into Ronaldo, and he got the goal at the end. We broke away, we got that second goal, and he just, ah. Oh. Your shoulders dropped in a, in a satisfying release. That's what it was, that second goal there. Manchester United needed that overall performance. I swear, though, right, this is something I truly believe. Oh, I find out, maybe maybe Ralph's speaking about it. Maybe nothing, I don't think you really hear about this. I genuinely think that Ralph Randnick and Manchester United intended to play not like that in the first half, not as bad as that, but I, I think the intention was there for Manchester United to play with a little bit of a lack of pace in that first half, for Manchester United to kind of sit off and let Brighton bring the game to us because I genuinely think that Ralph Radnick now, as we've seen in the last few games, if you go back to Middlesbrough, you go to Burnley, you go to Southampton, you go to here, four games in a row, again, most of the games under Ralph Radnick, we haven't played well for the full 90. Today was the exact same. It was a little bit different in the fact that we played better in the second half and worse in the first half. But we played so abysmal, there was such a lack of movement. It almost felt like it was on purpose. I swear to God, that's what it felt like. Because as soon as the second half kicked off, boom, United on the front foot, boom, United were pressing. Almost like they were just waiting and sitting back. But just the lack of, the, just a total lack of application from anybody in that first half. You're like, how? How are you professional footballers? And if that really is the case that, it was, it was the decision by Ragnick to look at this team and go, you know what, we're just not capable of, of controlling 90 minutes yet. And if we're going to be better in one half, I'd rather we be better in the second. You can call it a stroke of luck that United went down, to the, United, Brighton, sorry, went down to 10 men. But did United massively take advantage of it? No, I don't think we did. And I revert to that. That's my main takeaway from that game there is the lack of killer instinct. United just can't seem to just end the game. 
one nil up against Brighton for and with 10 men for like 35, 40 minutes, it should be a breeze. Brighton, incredibly impressive. 11 on 11. I thought they play well. They're definitely more of a sum of their parts. I think that's down to Graham Potter, who's done a very good job there at Brighton. I think Basuma, we saw what Basuma did there in the field today. And I've got to speak about Fred, man. I have to speak about Fred. The reason Fred was brought in today was to give Manchester United a bit more of assuredness in midfield. He's the bulldog. He's not the creator. He's not an architect. That will never be the best part of his game. But he's good. He's like basically scrappy dude. That's what I've always called him before. Running around, trying to win the ball back as much as possible. But when it comes to ball retention, absolutely woeful from Fred today. Did it say, did it say here how many times he lost the ball? Let's have a look. I don't think it did. Dispossessed twice. Well, it felt like he was dispossessed more than twice. That's for sure. Fred today, for, he, you, you saw the limitations of his game. And Paul Pogba did not deserve to be dropped for that. If Manchester United are going to play with two holding midfielders, Manchester United had to control the entire game. We didn't control... If we, we, we control hardly any of that game, really. Controls the big buzzword from Ralph. And that's why he has used Fred and McTominay quite often. But as we saw in our last games against Borough, against uh, South Southampton and against Burnley, creativity was the highlight. Creating chances left, right and centre. And had our finishing boots been on in our last three, four games, wow, we've been in a different position right now. Today was not one of those games. Today was not a game where... We created chances for fun. Today was a game where we, I mean, we did create plenty of chances. I'll be honest. Ronaldo there when he got kicked the ball, when the ball got kicked out. I couldn't believe that Ronaldo didn't shoot first of all. And then uh, Bruno, he missed. Ronaldo having a couple of headers. We still had, today had probably four, five really golden chances. And we won that 2-0, maybe even six. So it's not as if we didn't have any chances. But by comparison, the last few games, we had less. I thought again today, Jaden Sancho, hey, look, Jaden Sancho is really starting to find his feet now. It's not just one performance. It's not just a 45-minute cameo. Every game, he's really looking like our most dangerous winger, like he's going to create some chances, and he does keep creating chances. Long may it continue. I'm excited to see how he continues to get on. If we're looking at how Maguire played, uh, that sort of performance, they got him down as a 7.3 there, but nothing really to say about our, our defense, really. Brighton... They were so impressive in their press in that first half. Everybody just, to a man, were just like, nah, not at all. And this, this is the Ragnick team that loves the high press. Well, the Ragnick manager anyway. That first half, we sat off so, so much. I was like, surely they're being told to. There's no way that Ralph's going to be happy going in at half time if the players are really just not moving. They just were not moving. There was no high press whatsoever from these players there against Brighton. So much so, as I said, that to me, it felt like it was on purpose. That Ragnick just admitted to himself, we can't control the game for 90 minutes at the moment. If we're going to control one half, I'd rather we control the second half. Go in at, go in at halftime, nil-nil, come out and take the tempo up and use the old Trafford crowd. Whatever, you, whatever happened, it worked today. The result was there. 2-0, thank God for that. No more one-all draws. But I tell you what, it nearly was another one-all draw. That's what I mean. That lack of, kink, that lack of killer instinct is a massive Achilles heel of this team. And this team's got quite a few Achilles heels. That one in particular there. If we had a killer instinct, the Borough game wouldn't have happened. Well, the Borough result wouldn't have happened. The Burnley result wouldn't have happened. And the Southampton result wouldn't have happened. And today, it nearly happened again. We were dicing with it. We got a little bit fortunate there. Brighton hitting the bar. Even down to 10 men, they were dangerous. But ultimately, United come away with the three points. We got a second goal. Excellent from, Chris, from Cristiano Ronaldo to get the first. Decent from Bruno Fernandes to get the second. Happy days. Now, that needs to be the start of something. Please, for the love of God, be the fucking start of something. Those three results there. And that, and that first half against... Wow, that first half was... Well, it's, it's as bad as it's going to get. As bad as it's going to get, really. Rock bottom, I would say. Utter lack of tempo and anything. But second half, we played different. We came out different and we got the result. So ultimately, that'll be a game where Ragnik's happy. I don't think it's going to be a game that, as I said at the start, it's not a game where we get any real answers as fans as to where the improvement's going to come at X, Y, Z. It's only really the West Ham game, isn't it? Oh, not, not just the West Ham, but the West Ham game is the best game still we've had on the Ralph Ragnik. Control the full 90. How can you do that against West Ham and then struggle against Borough and Burnley and Southampton? I don't know. 
But at least we got the result there today. It wasn't the best performance in any way, in any way, shape or form. And I think it showed today there that Fred, Fred's going to have to sit on the bench now. Pogba has to start for Manchester United inside that midfield. We need the creativity. Fred's bulldog nature, it works in certain games. It can't be our go-to anymore. That was Solskjaer, not Ragnik. But anyway, three points today, two goals. Well, who was your man of the match for me? It was Bruno Fernandes. Let me know what you think. But Ronaldo's back in one of the goals and just at least we don't have to talk about a one-all anymore. Not right now, anyway. <laughs>